Okay, so today's the day. You're gonna put all your sewing skills to the test and make a little toy-sized pillow. <laughs> so there's lots of different ways that you can make this. And the way I'm gonna show you, you're actually going to see the stitches on the outside. But if you look at like um, most things, like if you were making, here's a pillow that my mom sewed. This is actually her dad's, um, both of her parents have passed away and this is her dad's sh old shirt and her mom's old shirt. She sewed them together and that's sweet. But you can't see the stitches because what she did when she sewed it, she sewed it inside out. So that the stitches, I don't know if I can open this with one hand, um, the stitches are actually on the inside and then they flipped it. So let me see if I can show you that. I don't know if it'll let me, if I take it inside out. So look, if I flip it inside out, now you can see, she used a sewing machine, but you can see the stitches. So if you don't want to see the stitches like you do on like professional pillows, like over there, like what you buy at the store, then you sew on the opposite side, the side where you don't see the pattern. And then when you flip it, then you have a really clean edge. Now that's one way to do it, but that's not the way I'm going to show you today. Today, I'm going to show you um, just doing a whip stitch around all on the, on the, um, fancier side of the fabric. So if you want to try it the other way, you can. The reason I'm not going to do it that way is usually um, when you do it where you don't see the stitch, you have to go all around um, like ours has. It, ours is going to need three sides sewn. You'd go all around two sides and then the third side, you'd flip it and then do a special kind of stitch that's an invisible stitch. And I'm not teaching you that. So we're not even going to worry about it. So today you are going to need your piece of fabric that looks like this. Um, might be cut different than mine. You're going to need your pins. Um, you are going to need, I would use white thread just because the background of this is white. So you won't see it quite as much and you'll need some scissors as well. Okay. So first thing we're going to do, if you have um, little frayed pieces, don't worry about that. But like mine actually has these holes. I don't want those. Can you see them? I don't want those showing on my pillow. So I'm actually just going to cut those off um, because they will show through. So I'm going to get my scissors and I'm just going to cut that as straight as I can so that it doesn't show on my thing. Some of yours will have that. Some of yours won't because it just depends on where it was on the, on the ream of fabric. And now mine's, I'm also going to cut this side a little bit because it's really hard for me to do this around the camera. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, it's not super straight. You want the sides to all line up pretty well. It's really hard for me to cut this, like I said, on the camera. I'm so sorry. Let me do this and then I'll put it down. Okay, nah, good enough. Okay, so what you're going to be doing, remember what I said about pins. You want to be very careful that you don't drop your pins on the ground because that's just asking for somebody to step on it and get an owie. All right, so what you're going to do with this one, we're going to have the pretty side, not the back side. The pretty side um, is what we're going to be working on. We are going to fold, actually, I can put on the back side like that, but you're going to fold it in half, all right, so that it the corners meet and the edges meet. Now, you want it to be pretty close. Now, as you can see, this corner is actually not super close. I may need to cut that. Um, so I am gonna cut it a little bit. You might, you may wanna cut it after you pin even. Normally, that wouldn't matter because when you flipped it the other way around, you wouldn't see it, but since we're gonna stitch on this side, you will see it. Okay, so once it's pretty even, you're gonna get your pins. You're gonna be putting about four pins in. So I'm doing, remember, go in, and then kind of push it up the other side so it goes in and out. You're gonna do two on this top part, at least two, you could do three. You're gonna do one on each end. All right. Actually, no, let's leave this end open because we don't wanna accidentally sew it. That's the end we're gonna stuff it. So for now, let's just do three, one on the end and two on the top. I already have my string um, knotted threaded and knotted. And this is not going to be enough to do all of it. This is what I had left over from something else, but it was a decent amount. So at some point, I'm probably going to have to stop and re-thread it. So that's okay. That actually happens when you're sewing things by hand. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start it. And this is going to be a little different. I don't want that big knot to be showing since we're not flipping it inside out. So I'm actually going to put it inside the pillow. 
so that look where it went. It's hiding in there. And once I sew over it, you won't even see it. And for my stitches, I'm going to do my whip stitch where I can go back to front or front to back, whichever one you like better. But I'm going to put them fairly close together and make them a little small because I want this to be a little tighter. So here we go. Ready? I'm just going to keep going around each time. My needle isn't super sharp, so it doesn't go through very well. All right, see how I'm putting them fairly? Let me make sure it's zoomed in real well, focused. I'm putting them fairly close together. And I have chosen to go from the back side. So each time, I'm going to make sure I pull enough that it's tight, but it's not like, like puckering the fabric. If you pull it too tight, you just need to loosen it. So look, if that's see how that messed up the fabric, I'm just going to kind of loosen it back up. All right, and I'm just going to keep going. And I'm actually going to keep going, but I am going to stop talking and speed up this part of the video so you can see what it looks like when I get to the end. And I'm just going to keep doing, I'm going to go through like I just did, the exact same thing. I'm going to thread, I'm going to knot, and then I'm going to sew just like I did this entire side. See how close my stitches are? They're pretty close together. I'm going to do that whole thing for this side as well, but I'm going to stop when I get to this corner so that I can start stuffing. So I'm going to stop the video here and start it back again when I get to that end. Okay, so as you can see, I have stitched all the way on both of these sides and I stopped the stitch here. So now I need to use this stuffing to stuff the pillow. Now I didn't give you a specific amount, I just gave you a big chunk hoping it would be enough. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull pieces off of that big chunk and you're gonna shove it into your pillow and you're gonna make sure you push it all the way down to the end so that it's in the end. And you're just gonna do that over and over. Sorry until you feel like now see I'm pushing it down too so see I, I only have it in through there because um, if this were like a real pillow what happens is think about the pillow you have on your bed it gets flat doesn't it because as your head is on it and there's weight on it it starts to get flat so when you put the stuffing in you're going to push it in so that it starts off maybe a little bit too stuffed so then as it flattens out it won't be too flat all right, so now I notice there's hardly any in this corner, so I want to make sure I'm pushing it down into that corner. Um, when I make ornaments for my kids for Christmas, when I'm doing the stuffing, a lot of times I'll get like a pencil, like the eraser side of a pencil, and shove it down there so that the stuffing gets where I want it to go. All right, so I'm still stuffing. Now, once you get to the point where you feel like it's good, you do not want it to be overstuffed to the point where it is hanging out like this and you're trying to show it shut. So that's probably going to be enough, and I have a little extra, and that's fine. Okay, so once you get it stuffed where it's pretty much right down to the end but not sticking out, then you're going to grab a pin from your little tray. One should be good. You're going to, um, let me see if I can make this, you're going to pinch it shut. making sure that there's no stuffing hanging out. You're gonna pinch it shut and put your pin through. In and then back out the front. All right, so now I'm just gonna stitch that front. I already have my last um, piece of um, thread knotted. So I'm gonna go through the back side so that nobody notices, they don't see the stitch because that little loop will go in the middle. And then I was thinking about it, and it may be easier when you guys do your whip stitch to go forward to back. Make sure you go through both pieces at one time. Because I, for some reason, I just always um, tend to go back to front. But it might be easier when you're starting off if you loop it around because then you can see better where you're going, okay? That might work better for you. And then just continue that whip stitch all the way around, making sure that when you go through the back, that you are getting the back layer as well. All right, so let's um, fast forward through this. All right, so once you get to the end and you've done it all, take that pin out and let's finish this last um, thread. I'm gonna go in through the inside if I can. 
and do my loop, go through my loop, and pull. Go through the inside a little bit, go through my loop, and pull. And then if I just cut this, it's going to be hanging off. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to put my needle inside, make it go through. See, I'm making it go through. It's over here. Go through. I'm not even going through the fabric, just in between the fabric. And then I'm going to just pull it out here. So now what happens is when I cut this, it won't be hanging out. It will be inside right there so nobody will see it. All right, so now if you kind of wiggle the stuffing around, you can get it back down the where it should be on the end. And now you've got a little pillow. So should, say, Elsa show up at your house maybe and need a nap, she's good to go. Or if you're not an Elsa person and maybe Spider-Man is your jam, boom, nap time. Spider-Man doing his thing. Even Black Panther can get out on this pillow, whatever. Um, if you don't want to use it for your toys, you could even use it as like a little like wrist pillow for if you're typing or like doing your tablet so that your wrist is supported. So there's your little pillow. I would love to see pictures of your finished product.